Hey guys, even here and in today's video we got a couple of very interesting bodybuilding updates. The first one is about Krizo and whatever happened to him and why he was off at the Emperor Cup Spain. So today he made a post. It's a long video and it's all in Slovakian, but I have a friend who speaks Slovakian so he translated this for me. And basically overall what Krizo says is the reason why he was off was, as Sai also said, not really the conditioning. He says he was happy with the conditioning the morning of the show. But there is a couple of reasons why he was off. First of all, the show was running late, big time. It was supposed to start at 1 p.m., but it started four hours late. And he started pumping up way too early, so that affected his conditioning. He also says it was very warm backstage and on the stage as well but those issues the other guys face those issues as well so i don't know if that's really an excuse also he says he didn't sleep almost at all for the past two days i don't know exactly what is the reason for that but i think he had some stomach issues and also he has a shoulder injury so he is not gonna be competing at the Portugal Pro, which was the plan originally. Unfortunately, we won't get to see him over there. So I don't know if this guy is even gonna qualify for the Mr. Olympia, which is very unfortunate. If you read the comments, you will notice that a lot of people are saying that he should change a coach, which, I mean, I can, I can see, I agree. I mean, he's a top-level guy, he's a top Olympian. Maybe a new coach, a high, high-level coach, would be better for him but then this show i don't think this show is the reason to do that i mean he was obviously very much off it's not that he's usually having problems like this i mean he got up to be seventh in the world guys i mean i there is a couple of reasons why he should maybe change the coach for example like at the mr olympia he was a little bit too dry which is not exactly what the judges in the ifbb pro league are looking for and it is what they're looking for in the european ifbb over here back when he was in the IVB Elite Pro, so if a coach knew that, he wouldn't be so dried out, and you know, there are certain inconsistencies that we saw so far, sometimes he's too full, sometimes his posing is off, sometimes this and that, if he had a coach who can you know, help him with all of that, it would work better for him, but then on the other hand, the coach that he has, that he had so far, knows his body exactly, so the other coach would have to learn his body over time, maybe he doesn't want to go into a new endeavor like that but you know it is what it is should he change a coach i think it could help but not necessarily maybe his current coach is doing the best that he can with Grigio and he doesn't want to try new things anyways they got very far together but maybe a new a top level coach would help him reach new heights if he is motivated to try new things to really push his physique to the max which i don't really get the impression that he wants to do that i don't really feel like he has those kind of aspirations it feels like he's uh, looking at bodybuilding as his job and he's doing the minimum work he needs to do and with his genetics he's where he is and he's living off of it but in order to improve to get even better he would have to do a lot of harder things and i don't know if he wants to do it now as far as his conditioning at this show once again look at the glutes here and the lower back the hamstrings i don't see any fat i don't think he was off with conditioning i think he was spot on and something went wrong and he just he was just holding a lot of water on that day on the stage which is very unfortunate he was shaking on the stage he looked like he was sleepy you know his face he looked tired he was look at it look at this very clumsy he wasn't controlling his his midsection the best way you know he didn't really show that he was happy with what he looks like and that he was on stage and as he says he did face some adversity heading into this show so this is not exactly the best Grigio as far as speak but muscularity wise even conditioning wise i think he did all he could and this time around it didn't work in his favor maybe hopefully his shoulder gets better and he does a show in like a month or two months one of the shows before the mr olympia and he actually does the mr olympia i really hope that's gonna be the case but you know shoulder injuries are nasty they are the worst it takes longest time for you to recover from it so i don't know maybe krizu is done for the year it most likely is the case. Whatever you guys think, tell me down below. Alright, the next thing I wanted to talk about is Nick Walker. 
And as you can see, he posted a couple of physique updates in which he looks insane, as usual. He is very lean from competing recently, and he, you know, he got the fullness back, so now he looks insane, man. The size of those arms, it just blowing my mind every time I see it. But the thing I wanted to talk about is Nick's midsection, which is always a topic when it comes to Nick, especially after this year, especially after the Pittsburgh Pro and the New York Pro. So in my previous video about Nick Walker, I said that his midsection looks a lot smaller. And a lot of the comments were like, his midsection always looks like it's gonna be downsized, but in the end, it always ends up looking pretty bad. Also, the comments say that his legs tend to look good in the offseason, before the show, but on the stage, they never really look crazy improved. Do I agree with that? I mean, there is some truth to it. But after seeing Gold of Physique updates from Nick Walker, I just can't deny the fact that his midsection actually looks a lot improved from the New York Pro. And guys, please, understand what I'm saying. I am not saying that his midsection actually got smaller in four weeks. I'm not saying his midsection actually lost uh, its actual size. No, no, what I'm saying is, for the New York Pro, he probably felt overly confident that he can win that show without trying super hard. So maybe he didn't practice posing enough. He didn't try super hard to control the midsection, he didn't do his vacuums, he didn't try too hard to control, to keep the midsection in. And now that he heard from so many people that that was the issue, I'm sure, I'm 100% sure that even the judges told him the reason why it was so close between him and Martin is because of that one thing. It couldn't be anything else. Nick's muscularity... And overall, I mean, everything, like the hardness, the fullness, the, 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 the completeness, the uh, everything, really, everything was superior. The only, the only issue was the shape, the symmetry, you know, the, 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 the lines. And all that looked bad because, mainly because of the midsection. If that could be fixed, he could look so much, so much better. So what he needs to do right now is practice posing like a maniac and pull a Rolly Winkler. You guys remember how bad of an issue Rolly had with his gut. And then, all of a sudden, I think it was 2017 or 2018, he completely reversed things. I mean, his midsection was not a bloated gut, it became a great vacuum. Because he was practicing the vacuum and he was, if I remember correctly, he was wearing a waist trainer and he was keeping it very, very tight, I think all day long, not just while training, he was talking about this and he completely reversed it. And maybe Nick can do it as well. I think he can, if he really wants to, with his mindset, with his will, I think he can do it, absolutely. And I think he's doing something about it already, because look at this midsection now. When you look at it right here, would you say that this waist looks crazy big? As you could say at the New York Pro and the Pittsburgh Pro guest posing? You can't say that based on these photos. I mean, sure, he's probably fasted here, and he's really trying to control it in just to take a photo, but on stage it's gonna be different. However, if he tries really hard, he practices this all, t all the time, even in transitions, even like in all the poses from behind, in, in a, when he's doing a posing routine, he can definitely make a big change, and I think he's doing that. You can definitely notice it from all the angles, from the front and from the side. His midsection definitely looks a lot tighter. So we'll see, there is still a long time before the Mr. Olympia, like 17 weeks or even less. I mean, it's gonna pass very, very quickly, but we're gonna see it on that day. Hopefully he will fix that one thing, but to me, this looks promising. I mean, look at the size of this freaking arm, man. <laughs> the arms and the shoulders and the chest and also the legs here look very thick. If he can just try to keep that midsection tight, man, he can even... I don't want to say it, but yeah, I think he can win the Mr. Olympia. There you go, I said it. What do you guys think? Is that possible? Tell me down below. And finally, we get a physique update from Wesley Wissers at 280 pounds. There you go, guys. If you're wondering how heavy Wesley Wisters is, it's 280 pounds at 17 weeks out of Mr. Olympia and very, very lean. If he tried to bulk up, he would probably get over 300 pounds easily with his height and with this frame with so much size. 
yeah, I, I think definitely he could go over 300 easily, but I don't think that's the best case for him. He needs to keep his waist as small as possible. Now, in the comments, I saw people saying that uh, his left side is looking bigger than his right side. And yeah, it's noticeable here, but I think it's just the angle. He's tilting his body a little bit, so it just makes it look like that. I don't think that's gonna be an issue for Wesley Wissers. Now, the question is, can Wesley Wissers actually win the Mr. Olympia and become the new Classic Physique Mr. Olympia champion? I think it's a possibility. It's almost impossible to claim something like that. I mean, he's going against Chris Bumstead, who is basically, who has a legacy right now, who is almost impossible to beat. But if anybody can do it, I think it's this guy. And he said something very interesting recently. Wesley Wissers became a father five or four years ago. And then he became a father again two or three years ago. Something like that. But his children are, you know, old enough now that they're not really, you know, causing him to lose sleep. And he can really focus more on bodybuilding now. When they were too young, too little, he had trouble sleeping. He had trouble working, bo doing bodybuilding and working and doing everything and raising babies, and he says that's the reason why he wasn't able to bring the best conditioning possible, so now that his children are old enough, he can focus on bodybuilding much more, and that's why he brought great conditioning to the Arnold Classic stage, and also he has a phenomenal coach, potentially the best coach in the world right now, Stefan Kinzel, so if he nails it, and I'm pretty sure he will do that for the Mr. Olympia, if he comes even a little bit improved with crazy conditioning that he brought to the Arnold Classic stage, with his height and his frame, his size, he can truly challenge Chris Bumstead. And there is a video on my channel you can watch to see a comparison between West Lewister's 20, 2024 uh, Arnold Classic and uh, last year's Mr. Olympia of Chris Bumstead. And there is a couple of shots that Wesley can actually win over Chris Bumstead. So, in my opinion, he actually has a slight chance of winning the Mr. Olympia. Whatever you guys think, tell me down below. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. For more content like this, guys, subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon. All the best and bye-bye.